The history of Illyrian warfare spans from the beginning of the second millennium BC up to the first century AD in the region of Illyria and in southern Italy where the Iaphidian civilization flourished. It concerns the armed conflicts of the Illyrian tribes and their kingdoms in the Balkans in Italy as well as pirate activity in Mediterranean. Apart from conflicts between Illyrians and neighboring nations and tribes, numerous wars were recorded among Illyrian tribes themselves. Illyrians were renowned warriors, according to ancient sources. They were known as skilled craftsmen and shipbuilders in ancient times and controlled much of the Adriatic and Ionian Sea using their numerous warships. Illyrians had effective weapons such as the Seeker, a curved tip sword that originated in Illyria and was eventually adopted all over the Balkans and used later by the Romans. Mythological instances of Illyrians engaged in armed conflict occurred in Greek mythology and specifically in the legend of Cadmus and Harmonia, where Cadmus led the Illyrian in Chelians in a victorious campaign against the Illyrians after a divine advice from the oracle. If the legend is true this war would have occurred around 2000 BC, the time when Cadmus has been claimed to have lived. Tribal Conflicts Illyrian tribes were reluctant to help each other in times of war and even fought amongst each other and they sometimes allied with the neighboring Romans and Greeks. These conflicts happened because of land, pastures and areas of natural substances such as iron and salt. The Romans before they conquered Illyria were involved in tribal conflicts and using them to their advantage. The most known incident is the involvement of the Romans in a war between the Dalmatians and the Liburnians over Promona, which in the end were encouraged to take peace. Commonly the Romans were ordered to act as referees in the bloody fights. The tribe of Autariate fought against the RDA for control of valuable salt mines. The RDA were notorious before being defeated by the Romans. The Darossi had suffered attacks from the Dalmatae to the extent that they requested Roman aid. States The earliest recorded Illyrian kingdom was that of the Enchler in the 8th century BC. The Enchler held dominance for two centuries until their state crumbled from the start of the 6th century BC. After the Enchelai the Taulanta formed their own state in the 7th century BC. The Autariate under Plorias were a kingdom. The kingdom of the RDA began at 230 BC and ended at 167 BC. The most notable Illyrian kingdoms and dynasties were those of Badilus of the Dardani and of Agron of the RDA who created the last in best known Illyrian kingdom. Agron ruled over the RDA and had extended his rule to other tribes as well. As for the Dardanians, they always had separate domains from the rest of the Illyrians. The Illyrian kingdoms were composed of small areas within region of Illyria. The exact extent of even the most prominent ones remains unknown. Only the Romans ruled the entire region. The internal organization of the South Illyrian kingdoms points to imitation of their neighboring Greek kingdoms and influence from the Greek and Hellenistic world in the growth of their urban centers. Polybius gives us an image of society within an Illyrian kingdom as peasant infantry fought under aristocrats which he calls in Greek polydynastae, where each one controlled a town within the kingdom. The monarchy was established on hereditary lines and Illyrian rulers used marriages as a means of alliance with other powers. Pliny writes that the people that formed the nucleus of the Illyrian kingdom were Illyrians proper or Illyrii propria dicta. They were the Taulantii, the Pleria, the Endirudinii, Sassari, Gravae, and the Labitae. These later joined to form the Decleator, Liburnian Thalassocracy. Navigable skills and mobility of the Liburnians on their swift ships, the Liburna allowed them to be present very early. Not only along the eastern Adriatic coast, they reached also the opposite, western, Italic coast. This process started during Great Pannonian Adriatic movements and migrations at the end of the Bronze Age, from the 12th to 10th century BC. In the Iron Age, they were already in the Italic coast, establishing colonies in Apulia and especially in Picinum, where specific Iron Age cultures developed.
From the 9th to the 6th century BC there was certain coin, cultural unity in the Adriatic, with the general Liburnan and Seal, whose naval supremacy meant both political and economical authority through a several centuries. In the 9th century BC there ruled the Inner Adriatic Sea and in the first half of the 8th century BC they expanded southwards. According to Strabo, the Liburnians became masters of island of Corsera, making it their most southern outpost, by which they controlled the passage into the Adriatic Sea. In 735 BC, they abandoned it, under pressure of Corinthian ruler Hushacrates, during the period of Corinthian expansion to South Italy. Sicily and the Ionian Sea. However, their position in the Adriatic Sea was still strong in the next few centuries. Corinth was the first that went up against the Liburnians. The Bacchiada expelled the Liburna and the Eritreans from Corsera. About 625 BC, the Taulantii asked for the aid of Corinth and Corsera against the Liburna. The Greeks were victorious. Liburnian control of the Adriatic Sea coasts started to decrease in the 6th century BC. According to Pliny the Elder, the Liburnians lost supremacy in the western Adriatic coast due to invasion of the Umbri and the Gauls, obviously caused by strengthening and expansion of the Etruscan Union in the 6th century BC, whose rich material presence in the basin of Po River undoubtedly meant weakening of the Liburnian Thalassocracy influence in the northwest of Adriatic. Celtic breaks to the Italian peninsula after 400 BC significantly changed ethnic and political picture there. It directly imperiled remaining Liburnian possessions on the western coast, unlike at the western Adriatic coast. Celtic raids to the narrow Liburnian region at the eastern Adriatic coast were peripheral in geographical meaning. Despite of recorded material exchange, Celtic archaeological forms are marginal and secondary in regions settled by history, Iapodes, Dalmatian are especially rare in Liburnian Iron Age heritage, Iaphigy and Tarentine wars. The Iaphigy and Tarentine Wars were a set of conflicts and wars between the Greek colony of Taras and the three Iaphigian peoples, Mesopians, Pusatii and Dornians. Conflicts started immediately after the foundation of Tars in 706 BC over domination of the fertile adjacent plains in southern Italy. The expansion of Taranto was limited to the coast because of the resistance of the populations of Inner Apulia. In 473 BC, Taranto signed an alliance with Region to counter the Mesopi, Pusatai, and Lucanians. But the joint armies of the Tarentines and Regines were defeated near Caelia. In what Herodotus claims to be the greatest slaughter of Greeks in his knowledge, with 3,000 regions and uncountable Tarentines killed. In 466 BC, Taranto was again defeated by the Iapages, according to Aristotle, who praises its government. There were so many aristocrats killed that the Democratic Party was able to get the power to remove the monarchy, inaugurate a democracy, and expel the Pythagoreans. In c. 440 BC the Mesopian city-state of Brindisi entered into an alliance with Thuri. The Brindisi Thuri army had a leadership advantage in the form of Cleandridis an exiled Spartan general who had been banished from the Peloponnese for accepting an Athenian bribe as an advisor of the Spartan king Pleistoanax. Taranto supported the Peloponnesian side against Athens in the Peloponnesian War, refused anchorage and water to Athens in 415 BC, and even sent ships to help the Peloponnesians after the Athenian disaster in Sicily. On the other side, Athens supported the Mesopians in order to counter Taranto power. After 330 BC the Mesopians joined forces with the Tarentines against an even greater force, that of Rome. The alliances with Taras and with Cleonymus of Sparta in 304 BC was an anti-Roman campaign. Thus towards the end of the 4th century Rome had become a common enemy for both the Iaphigians and the Tarentines even as far as ending the prolonged battles and causing them to make an alliance. 
Illyrian expansion. In the 4th century BC Badillus became king of the Illyrians and creator of a new dynasty after overthrowing Cyrus the previous Illyrian king who had entered in a peace treaty over the control of Lynchestis. Bardilis succeeded in bringing various tribes into a single organization and soon became a formidable power in the Balkans, resulting in a change of relations with Macedonia. Using new war tactics in 393 BC the Illyrians won a decisive battle against Amentus III, expelling him and ruling Macedonia through a puppet king. In 392 BC Amentus III allied himself with the Thessalians and took Macedonia under his rule, taking it from the Dardanians. After continuous invasions Badillus forced the Macedonians to pay him an annual tribute in 372 BC. In 385 BC Badillus raided Epirus which was under Molossian rule. This time the Illyrians were allied with and aided by Dionysius of Syracuse to place Alchaetas, who was a refugee in his court, to the throne. Dionysius planned to control all the Ionian Sea. Sparta had intervened as soon as the events became known and expelled the Illyrians who were led by Bardilis. Despite being aided by 2,000 Greek hoplites and 500 suits of Greek armor, the Illyrians were defeated by the Spartans led by Ages Alors but not before ravaging the region and killing 15,000 Molossians. Thus their attempt to control Epirus failed. In 360 BC, another Illyrian attack forced the Molossian king Arambas to evacuate his non-combatant population to Aetolia and let the Illyrians loot freely. The stratagem worked and the Molossians fell upon the Illyrians who were encumbered with booty and defeated him. In the same year Arambas of the Molossians defeats the Illyrians after they raided and looted Epirus. In 360 BC the southern Paeonian tribes launched raids against Macedonia in support of an Illyrian invasion. In 359 BC Badillus won a decisive battle against the Macedonian king Perdiccas III in which the king himself was killed along with 4,000 of his soldiers and the Illyrians occupied the cities of Upper Macedonia. The Macedonian king's attempt to reconquer Upper Macedonia had failed. Following the disastrous defeat of the Macedonians by Badillus when King Philip took control of Macedonian throne in 358 BC, he reaffirmed the treaty with the Illyrians, marrying the Illyrian princess Audata, probably the daughter or the niece of Badillus. This gave Philip valuable time to gather his forces and to defeat the Illyrians, who were still under Bardilus. In the decisive Aragon Valley battle by killing about 7,000 and eliminating the Illyrian menace for some time. In this battle Bardilis himself was killed at the age of 90 after Philip II refused a peace treaty offered by the Illyrians. In 335 BC the southern Illyrian states were all subjected by Alexander the Great and only at the end of the 4th century BC won their independence. In 358 BC Philip of Macedon defeated Bardilis. Diodorus Siculus writes this of the event, and at first for a long while the battle was evenly poised because of the exceeding gallantry displayed on both sides. And as many were slain and still more wounded, the fortune of battle vacillated first one way then the other. Being constantly swayed by the valorous deeds of the combatants, but later as the horsemen pressed on from the flank and rear and Philip with the flower of his troops fought with true heroism, the mass of the Illyrians was compelled to take hastily to flight. When the pursuit had been kept up for a considerable distance and many had been slain in the flight, Philip recalled the Macedonians with the trumpet and erecting a trophy of victory buried his own dead, while the Illyrians, having sent ambassadors and withdrawn from all the Macedonian cities, obtained peace. But a more than 7,000 Illyrians were slain in this battle. Gallic Invasions from the 4th century BC, Celtic groups pushed into the Carpathian region and the Danube Basin, coinciding with their movement into Italy. According to legend, 300,000 Celts moved into Italy and Illyria. By the 3rd century, the native inhabitants of Pannonia were almost completely Celticized. 
The Illyrians had been waging war against the Greeks, leaving their western flank weak. Whilst Alexander ruled Greece, the Celts dared not to push south near Greece. Therefore, early Celtic expeditions were concentrated against Illyrian tribes. We have little information about the affairs in the Illyrian hinterland. But we do know that the first Balkan tribe to be defeated by the Celts was the Autariate, who during the 4th century had enjoyed a hegemony over much of the central Balkans, centered on the Morava Valley. An interesting account of cunning Celtic tactics is revealed in their attacks on the RDA. In 310 BC, Celtic general Melistimos attacked deep into Illyrian territory, subduing the Dardanians and the Peonians. In 280 BC they moved in three directions, toward Macedonia and Illyria, toward Greece, and toward Thrace. The main army according to Diodorus, of 150,000 foot soldiers equipped with great shields and 10,000 horsemen was followed by 2,000 wagons transporting food and equipment. All the states of the Balkans at this time looked at this movement with apprehension. Ptolemy, the king of Macedonia, took the news of the Gauls casually. He looked down with derision on the proposal of the king of the Dardanians, possibly Monunius, who sent delegates to say that they could offer 20,000 warriors to assist him. In an insulting manner, he said that the work was for the Macedonians to do. When the king of the Dardanians was told of this, he replied that the soon glorious Macedonian kingdom would fall because of the immaturity of a youth, and so it happened for in the battle that took place a few days later in Macedonia, the Macedonian army was routed and Ptolemy was wounded and taken prisoner. After continuing south and raiding the Delphi the Gallic army decided to return up north to their homeland but were all wiped out by the Dardanians, through which they had to pass. Illyrian Wars. In the First Illyrian War, which lasted from 229 BC to 228 BC, Rome's concern with the trade routes running across the Adriatic Sea increased after the First Punic War, when many tribes of Illyria became united under one queen, Tuta. The death of a Roman envoy named Caruncanius on the orders of Tutor and the attack on trading vessels owned by Italian merchants under Rome's protection, prompted the Roman Senate to dispatch a Roman army under the command of the consuls Lucius Postumius Albinus and Nius Fulvius Centrimulus. Rome expelled Illyrian garrisons at the Greek cities Epidamnus, Apollonia, Corcyra. Pharos and others and established a protectorate over these Greek towns. The Romans also set up Demetrius of Pharos as a power in Illyria to counterbalance the power of Tutor. The Second Illyrian War lasted from 220 BC to 219 BC. In 219 BC the Roman Republic was at war with the Celts of size Alpine Gaul, and the Second Punic War with Carthage was beginning. These distractions gave Demetrius the time he needed to build a new Illyrian war fleet. Leading this fleet of 90 ships, Demetrius sailed south of Lysis, violating his earlier treaty and starting the war. Demetrius' fleet first attacked Pylos where he captured 50 ships after several attempts. From Pylos the fleet sailed to the Cyclades, quelling resistance they found on the way. Demetrius foolishly sent a fleet across the Adriatic, and, with the Illyrian forces divided, the fortified city of Dimale was captured by the Roman fleet under Lucius Aemilius Paulus. From Dimale the navy went towards Pharos. The forces of Rome routed the Illyrians and Demetrius fled to Macedon where he became a trusted counsellor at the court of Philip V of Macedon, and remained until his death at Messon in 214 BC. During the Third Illyrian War in 168 BC the Illyrian king Gentius allied himself with the Macedonians. First in 171 BC, he was allied with the Romans against the Macedonians, but in 169 he changed sides and allied himself with Perseus of Macedon. He arrested two Roman legatee and destroyed the cities of Apollonia and Dyrrhachium, which were allied with Rome.
In 168 he was defeated at Skodra by a Roman force under L. Anasius Gallus, and in 167 brought to Rome as a captive to participate in Gallus' triumph, after which he was interned in Igivium. In the Illyrian War of 229 BC, 219 BC and 168 BC, Rome overran the Illyrian settlements and suppressed piracy which had made Adriatic Sea an unsafe region for Roman commerce. There were three Roman campaigns, the first against Tuta, the second against Demetrius of Pharos and the third against Gentius. The first Roman campaign of 229 BC marked the first time that the Roman navy crossed the Adriatic in order to launch the invasion.